Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our brand new study in the uh, book by W. N. Pickering entitled The Identity of the New Testament Text, published in 2014. We're going to take a look at the introduction today. It'll be pages 1 through 17. But two things first. You must understand that the author... Professor Pickering is going to favor the majority text, the Textus Receptus. That does not mean that I prefer the majority text. It does not mean that I prefer the minority text. I think that both New Testament Greek texts have great validity. And to illustrate that point, I want to give you the list of the Bibles about the seven Bibles that I own. I have a 1611 King James Version, a New Oxford Annotated Bible, and the New Revised Standard Version, a New Testament interlinear of the King James with the majority text, a New Testament interlinear with the New Revised Standard Version and the critical text, a New Testament interlinear with the ESV Version and the critical text, I also have a Young's Literal Translation Bible, and I have a 1560 Geneva Bible. All seven of these Bibles I consider to be the living Word of God. I do not have a preference either way for the majority text or for the minority text. So I'm going to present the material here objectively as possible, but the author, I'll tell you up front, the author is favoring the majority text. But I will present the material in a neutral manner, but you should be aware that the author is preferring the majority text. So now we can begin and uh, get a good chance to take a look at textual criticism. Let's go to block one and take a look at the problem that we face under the original text, the original New Testament documents have deteriorated long ago, probably by A.D. 100, but most certainly by A.D. 200. We therefore consult surviving, surviving copies of copies, and they do not agree with each other. We also consult the church fathers who quoted from the New Testament we have over 5,000 Greek manuscripts ranging from tiny fragments to complete documents. But we have a variety of manuscripts, some very, very small fragments, but others as complete text. They range in date from the 2nd to the 16th century. There are thousands upon thousands of variances between the Greek text. The task is to evaluate the variant readings in order to identify the original wording. Therefore, block 1, note 3, we are to move from variant readings to original wording in textual criticism. Evaluation currently is divided into two camps. There's the majority text camp that uh, prefers the documents after the first century that agree with each other. There's the minority text camp or the critical text camp that has fewer documents, but they are older. They are prior to the fifth century, and they do vary from each other. The minority text group is called the Hecletic camp. The minority text group has been in control for over 130 years. The new King James Version uses the majority text. The new Revised Standard Version uses the minority text. So our problem is majority text versus minority text. Today, no one knows the precise wording of the original Greek text. Different scholars come to different evaluations. The Greek text of the United Bible Society 
has revised its own Greek text 28 times within the same Bible society. The author asks, can the original text be recovered? The current procedure is called hecleticism. The current textual criticism theory is called hecleticism. And it is the minority text method of using fewer in number text, but older texts that are prior to the 5th century. So, let's take a look at the eclectic method in block 2. Let's take a look at this current textual critical method in block 2. The eclectic method, this is the method of textual criticism in the 20th and the 21st century. The RSV, the NEB, and the NIV are based on this method. They follow two rules. Choose a reading that fits the context and choose a reading that explains the origin of the other divergent readings. It follows two principles, intrinsic probability and transcript probability. But there is a strong dependence on internal evidence. So the dependence on internal evidence. The United Bible Society uses a code system of A through D. A, the text is certain. B, the text has a degree of doubt. C, the text has considerable doubt. D, the text has a high degree of doubt. The eclectic method relies on subjective judgment, relying on the two rules of context and which text explains the others best. It requires knowing Christian history and how it might affect the variant. Cause of variant readings. Christian history must be recalled concerning institutions, doctrines, and events, and consider any conflicting movements. The author asks, can any one person possess these qualifications? Eclectic method ends up meaning free choice among readings. Free choice among readings, which is based on intrinsic probability meaning how does it fit the context with regard to style, with regard to idea, with regard to reference. Weight of manuscript is ignored, says the author. Manuscript tradition is ignored, says the author. So let's take a look at block 2, note 5, and manuscript tradition. When considering transcript probability, can the original wording be obtained from just one manuscript? No, it needs stronger support. The eclectic method is unrestrained by weight of manuscript. All variants become equals. Should variants become equals? Ecleticism is based solely on internal considerations. And the author says that is unacceptable. It ignores the 5,000 manuscripts of the majority text. It ignores patristic evidence. There is no weight of manuscript support. History of transmission is ignored. So you can see that uh, Professor Pickering says the new critical method, the eclectic method is ignoring the majority of texts that agree with each other. It is, they are ignoring weight of manuscript. So let's take a look at block 2 note 7, history of transmission of text. We have depreciated external evidence and affirmed internal evidence. Evaluating by subjective conjecture, textual criticism has ceased to become a science. The eclectic method, at best, is a secondary method. It emerged out of the Westcott and Hort theory. It emerged out of the Westcott and Hort theory and the Westcott and Hort revision committee. Therefore, let's take a look at block three. Okay, block three, 
the now qualified eclectic method. No pure eclectic method today. Most scholars work within the Westcott Hort framework. The Nestle Allen Greek New Testament is close to the Westcott Hort text. The new revised standard Bible is close to the Westcott Hort text. The problem is that we do not have a clear picture of text transmission for the first few centuries. Today, the default position is the Westcott Hort text. Therefore, block three, note two, Westcott Hort text as default position. Today, scholars follow the non-Western old text, all founded on the same Egyptian, Egyptian recension theory. Recension is the collecting and the analyzing of source text. There's a preference for the Alexandrian or the Egyptian text. Today, there is a general acceptance of the Westcott Hort text. We must break the psychological bond to the Westcott Hort text, says the author. So it's all about breaking the psychological bond. We must ascertain a clear perception of the Westcott Hort critical theory and its implications because it underlies all current textual criticism in the 20th and the 21st century. So our next lesson will look at the Westcott Hort critical theory. But this gives us, in the first lesson, it gives us a look at the problem. And the problem we face is very definitely the problem of which camp do we go with? The majority text of documents after the 5th century that agree with each other, or the critical text, the minority text, of older text prior to the 5th century that vary from each other. It's all about majority text versus minority text. And must we give some weight to weight of manuscript? What about the majority of manuscripts that agree with each other after the 5th century? What about weight of manuscript? What about history of transmission? How will Westcott and Hort address history of transmission? So this lesson gives us our problem. It gives us the current problematic state of textual criticism in 2019. Pick up in our next lesson in Chapter 2 on the Westcott-Hort Critical Theory.